Hi, welcome to the Alaska State Museum. I'm glad you could make it. I'm having a show here, over a hundred paintings. Let's go take a look. This is one of the few oil paintings in this whole show. Uh, it's of a dog I had on King Island. His name was Niatok, and we found out that that meant hiccup, so we preferred to call him hiccup. Uh, this painting was done in 1966 of the Lutak, Canary, and Haynes. And in those days, if I did a painting and it didn't turn out, I would turn over the paper and start on the other side. And as you can see, I don't even remember what it was, but it didn't turn out. Feeding the Pigeons is right down on South Franklin Street in Juneau, and it was done in casein paint. It was one of, one of my first paintings done in uh, casein instead of oil. When I painted in oil paintings, I was so serious about painting. Uh, and then when, I, when, I got, when somebody introduced me to casein painting, I suddenly loosened up and started enjoying myself. Sunday morning in Juneau at the Russian Church. Uh, it wasn't my first uh, painting of the Russian Church, and uh, I had done several earlier, and it definitely wasn't my last. I must have, must have done at least seven or eight paintings of the Russian Church, if not more. Such a picturesque little church that I just can't resist it. And it's right in my neighborhood. I hear the bells ring on the hour, every hour during the day. This is a, a very early favorite. It's an out at Auk Lake and uh, done in casein again. And uh, in this case, I've outlined uh, the figures uh, with black ink just to make them more pronounced. And a few years ago, we used this as a Christmas card. A 1969 painting of the hike up to second cabin for skiing. And that's the old ski area. Now it's in a totally different area. Uh, and at that time, they just had rope toes once you got to the ski area. But it took at least an hour, I think, as I recall, to, uh, to walk up there. But it was a beautiful walk. And took about five minutes to ski down if you wanted to ski. Tahini Hot Springs back in the early 70s and late 60s. This was done in 1969. Uh, Juan and my son and I would go up there quite often. He'd frequently bring, bring a friend. The chubby one right here on the t inner tube is my son and this is his friend. It's a wonderful hot spring. Here we are in Tenneke. This man is butchering crab. They either do it with an ax that's stuck into the piling and take the crab like this and go wham and break them right in half. Uh, or they, put, they hammer a nail in the piling and also do the same thing, grab the crab, whammo, and that breaks them right in half. They're deader than a doornail. And uh, here are the, the seagulls waiting for the scraps. People are always telling me, 
oh, Rhea, I saw the most wonderful scene, you just got to paint it. And my answer always is, or most always, is if, if I haven't seen it myself, I don't want to paint it. But however, I did see this bear come to Teneke, and he was nibbling his way down the hill uh, on, on blueberries. And of course, the dogs could smell him long before we could see him. And a heck of a lot of barking. And pr pretty soon here he appeared, very calmly eating berries. And the whole town was around, uh, very excited. And the dogs were even more excited, uh, just watching this bear. And he, uh, finally, the bear, I think, just got tired of all that noise and commotion. So he turned around and has ate his way back up the hillside. And this is more or less, this view is more or less from my cabin. A few years ago, there was great commotion in Teneke because a number of whales came very close to our side of the inlet. Practically any day of the summer, you can see a whale spouting on the other side of the inlet, which is about two miles across. This time they were eating krill on this side. And they were here for most of the day in this particular area, and right in front of town until the tide went out and then they took off. Of course, the whole town was very much interested and we all stood watching it. And uh, this is the result thereof, this painting is. Uh, I like the painting uh, well enough to uh, have a tapestry made of it in Aubusson, France, where I've had a number of tapestries made. I've ha I think I've had about uh, close to three dozen tapestries made in Aubusson that are now hanging uh, either in Alaska or in the lower states somewhere. Now I'm going to show you the backside of this tapestry, but don't you dare touch it yourself. Look at how complicated this is. Each, each strand is not one color. Each strand has five colors in it so that they can graduate the colors from light to dark. Uh, back in Teneke again, uh, the tide comes in, the tide goes out. When the tide goes out, there are all sorts of tidal pools. And there's nothing more fun for a kid than to go down there with a tin can and dig around, not dig around in the water and catch itty bitty little crabs and itty bitty little fish and big worms. It's just heaven. The day Vicky fell off the dock. Vicky is an 80-year-old woman, or was at the time, and she fell off the dock in Teneke. There was great commotion. They just, everyone looked and said, ooh, ah, but finally somebody jumped in to save her. And they took her out, it wasn't very deep, and they took her out back, back to land, and she still had her glasses on, and she was not hurt in the least bit. And here she is. Uh, falling off the dock. To this very day, she still claims that she was pushed. Teneke Medivac, and this is me up there. 
uh, I had broken my, my arm. And how that happened, I was walking down a metal staircase with my hands in my pocket on a rainy day with rubber boots on, and I slipped and fell and broke my arm. In Tenneke, if only there are only about 100 people that live there, and when anything happens in town, the whole town knows about it right away. And in this case, when the helicopter took me off, uh, the whole town was down by the helicopter pad to wave me off. It was very rough weather. Here's the ferry coming into Tanaki, and this is the view from my window. Uh, in this picture is my granddaughter, Mercedes, age two, and I want to point out that I always paint pink ladders. And I think the reason I do that is because I've never seen a pink ladder. I don't think, I don't think carpenters paint their ladders, let alone paint it pink, but in some of my other paintings, if you see a ladder, chances are it's pink. Uh, well, sometime in the 80s, uh, I went down the Yukon River on the Utana Freight and Barge Company. They, I asked if I could go along, and they said yes. When we came to Russian River, they had two Russian churches there. One was very old, so old that uh, the floor had holes in it, and it hadn't been used for years. And then they had the new church, which was mighty old itself. And, and that's this one, and I sketched that. And uh, so then when I came home to paint it, I, I very often paint a picture, and if I don't like it, I don't even finish it. I throw it out or turn the paper over and start over again. But in this, my first effort here, I thought the colors were just too heavy, too dark, and I didn't like uh, the dome. In short, I didn't like it. So I tried again with, the, with this painting, hoping to make it uh, more interesting. And uh, the things that I didn't like about this one was that the uh, Catholic priest was, was too stiff. I could tell he wasn't going to work. And the second thing I didn't like about it was this flamboyant sky. I thought the church was an improvement over the first one. Then finally, I did the third one. Here, the priest is more animated. He's really in there raking his lawn. The Yukon River is much more interesting than here, which is just a straight line. The church in itself is also more interesting. This ladder signifies that they're doing repair work on the church. In short, this is the one that I finally finished. Now here's, here's another example of a start and a finish. When my son and his uh, wife uh, announced that they were getting married, uh, I decided for a wedding gift I'd uh, make them a set of uh, dishes. And these are the dinner plates. Uh, the, the set consists of 10. There were about 100 guests that came over from Juneau on the ferry, maybe a few less. And also, uh, Tenneke had about 100 people, so there were about 200 people at the wedding. <laughs> 